This is the Ray Powers Hour. I'm back. And my guest on the line has been the front man and guitarist for some of the most influential and dynamic bands of our time. The Scream, Rat, Motley Crue, just to name a few. And he's currently fronting the storied group, The Dead Daisies, who is set to release their brand new album, Burn It Down, on April 6th. Here to talk about this rocking record, the one and the only, John Karabi. Thanks for joining us, man. How you doing? I'm all right, buddy. How you doing today? Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. So, you're in Nashville these days, right? Yeah, I've been here about um, 10, 12 years, something like that. It's been a while. You and everybody else, that town just gets bigger every time I go. It's like it's like Vegas. It's just blowing up. Yeah, and I'm not sure if I'm digging it, to be I honest know. with you now. <laughs> um, I love yeah. the town, but it, it, the, the traffic's starting to get insane. It, like, you know, literally driving when my wife has to deal with it more than I do. But right. she'll literally leave work at five thirty, six o'clock, and it'll take her an hour to go, like, 13 miles. It's crazy. I know. So... Um, it's getting out of hand, and we're we're actually starting to look at other cities. You know what I mean? So, um, and you're originally from Philadelphia, right here on the East Coast. I'm right outside New York City. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, born and raised in Philadelphia, and um, moved to LA in 1985 to achieve my musical career. And then I was in LA for like 20 years, and. I got tired of the traffic there, and I moved to Nashville. <laughs> it's following you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not digging it either. So oh, I know. Hey, it's look. all good. And uh, I guess I guess right off, congratulations to you for the Eagles. I'm a Steeler fan. I can get behind state of Pennsylvania, but uh, you know, it's all good. I was for a minute there. I was thinking this would be really cool if it was a Philadelphia Steelers Super Bowl. Well, they blew it you know twice. I mean? Yeah, they blew it twice, and they let the Patriots go both times. So, I know that'd have been really cool. Well, I know I'm 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 still a little in shock over the whole thing, and yeah. you know, but I'm onward and moving forward. I'm looking forward to 2018 Philadelphia Eagles football. Yes, so, sir. should be cool. Nice. Now, I guess no snow in Nashville, huh? We do get it on occasion. Um, this year is weird. We didn't get any snow, but it was really cold. Um, it was unusually cold here this year. Like, I mean, we got, you know, we got temperatures down to as low as, you know, three degrees, five degrees, zero. Wow. Um, so it, it was, this was a cold year for us, but, um, it's starting to warm up. Like, I don't know what it is there, but, um, Right now, it's about 50 degrees, so it's not too bad. Well, it's been 30s, but that just means it's been wet, heavy snow. But uh, uh, we're supposed to get more, but it's winter. What can you do? Well, I'm going to be in New York in a week and a half, so I'll, 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 know, I'll, I'll know how to pack. There you go. Cool. Now, I want to get to this album and talk about the Daisies, an Australian bass band that's been known for members coming and going. But I just want to touch upon your extensive resume briefly to map out what led you to the Daisies. You sang for The Scream, you cut a masterpiece album with Motley Crue, a stint with Rat on guitar, you form union with Bruce Kulick, you've got solo albums, appearances on various tribute albums. How do you wind up as part of the Dead Daisies? Um, well, I think all the stuff that I did in the past um, got to a point where, you know, they had a singer prior to me right. in the Daisies named uh, John Stevens, who sang with In Excess. Right. And um, John's also, he was in the Daisies, but he's also a very much in demand singer, uh, solo artist. And, um, you know, so there was a point where they had some trips and tours lined up and John couldn't do them. So they called me up. Marco actually called me Marco Mendoza and asked me to check out the band. And I, I went and I flew out to L.A. and met everybody. Uh, I knew most of the guys, but I didn't know at the time it was Richard Fortas on guitar and David Lowy. So I didn't know those two guys. So I flew out, met them, talked with them for a little bit. And then um, they asked me to go to Cuba. Right. I did the Cuban thing. And for lack of a better term, I think the Cuban thing was a little bit of a test to see what I was like on stage. And it was like a way for them to be 
committed but non-committal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Have me right. come over, do the shows, and, and kind of get a vibe for me, see where I was at. And then, um, you know, after we got done doing that trip, the management said, hey, we're getting ready to do another record. Would you like to do an album with us? And I, I thought the band was great. I'm like, yeah, sure. So I, I, that was in 2015, and here we are three years later. Yeah, you know, and that's part of the trappings, I guess, of, you know, being an in-demand guy is that sometimes you have to come and go. And that's been part of part of the thing with the Daisies. Like, I mean, one of the blessings of having Doug Aldridge and Marco Mendoza, and at the time we had Brian Tishy, you know, right. Richard Fortas, Dizzy, like all these cats, you know, they're, you know, Dizzy and Richard went back to GNR. Brian's always in demand for doing sessions oh, and God, gigs. Yeah. Doug's always in demand. Marco, you know, so it's one of the curses and blessings is, the, you know, the blessing is these guys are amazing players and, you know, we can go into the studio and record a record and they'll do it. They'll do their track in like one take, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, but everybody knows that. So everybody that's doing a record wants Marco, you know, Dean or Doug or whoever to play on their album. You know, so sometimes uh, schedules tend to overlap, you know, so we've had issues in the past where, um, you know, for example, Brian Tishy, the first tour that I did with him, he was off doing something else and he couldn't do part of the Kiss tour. So we had to have another friend of ours, Tommy, Tommy Clefettos uh, from Sabbath, come in and fill in for Brian. And then Brian came back. But um, now this time, Brian, you know, Brian's been wanting to do a solo album. He's doing some shows with Foreigner. He did Sweet Lynch. I can't remember. Too. Yeah, Don Felder. He's doing a lot of stuff this year. and yeah. So he's just like, you know what? I, I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for me and vice versa. And, you know, we hugged and Brian went off to do his thing and entered Dean Castronova. So, you know, onward and upward. Yeah. Now, I despise the term supergroup because I just feel it's been thrown around so much and cheapened. It's cheesy at this point. Having said that, this band is always and always will feature top-notch players. As you said, currently, it's yourself, Doug Aldrich, the founder, David Lowy, on guitar, Marco Mendoza on mm -hmm. bass, and as you said, Dean Castronova on drums. And, I mean, you've, yeah. you've even had two guys in the Rolling Stones in this band. It, it's just amazing, the amount of talent. Well, it, the, the, the thing of it is, with, like I said, Daryl and and um, Bernard, they, they came over to Cuba with us, and they were just part of the they were part of the show. Right. Um, you know, there was a few songs like I sang. You know, maybe seventy percent of the set. Bernard came up and sang the other thirty. There was some stuff that we did together. So he he was he was part of the show. Daryl Daryl at one point Marco when Marco first hooked up with the Dead Daisies. He had some prior commitments with um, Black Star Riders he was playing with. So, or Thin Lizzy, I, I think they were still billed under Thin Lizzy at the time. Marco was playing with them, and, you know, he had done this, he had done some recording with the Dead Daisies, but he couldn't do a few shows. So we brought Daryl out, and he, you know, Daryl filled in for him. So a lot of the names that are on that list are just friends of ours that have done a few shows with us to some degree or another, or they just filled in for one of the members of the band because they were unavailable at the time. You know, they haven't really been members, right? but, um, you know, I think the band is, we've, we've kind of, we've kind of got a solidified lineup now and we're looking forward to 2018, you know? Yeah. Now, was that a challenge to adjust to, you know, all these new members coming and going and, or are you guys just that locked in where it's like, all right, here's the core, here's some new pieces. These guys are pros. And, uh, that's part of the deal is you just have to vibe. Yeah. I think there's, you know, for, I mean, if I can sound weird now, since I joined the band, I think at this point, the core, um, the one, the common thread that's been through the last four records has been David, Marco and myself, right. you know, like I said, had, had Dizzy and Richard not gotten a call to come back and do that big reunion tour with G and R, they'd still be here. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so Doug came into the picture and it was Doug, David, Doug, David, Brian, Marco and myself. And we did two records with that lineup and did two full tours. 
And then I think it, Brian was just, Brian's, he's a funny dude. Like Brian's got so much energy and his brain is all over the place. Like <laughs> yes. he's got his Randy Rhodes tributes. He's doing, he does his Bonzo bashes. He's also, a, you know, he's not just a drummer. He's a very accomplished musician. So he's been talking about doing a solo record forever. He's very much in demand for guys like Don Felder, Steven Tyler, uh, now Foreigner, you know. So, you know, I think he just, I think he took the Foreigner gig because they're not going to play as much as we will over the course of a year. Right. And then it will allow him to go out and play shows and still go home and work on his solo record. So, you know, we brought Dean in. Dean's happy to be here. He's really excited about um, getting out and playing on the road again. And, you know, so we just got to do what we got to do. And we're moving forward. Absolutely. This is the Ray Powers Hour. My guest on the line is John Karabi. We're talking Dead Daisies here. Now, Burn It Down is the band's third studio album, right? And your second with the band. No, it's my third. Oh, it's your third? Band. Okay. Yeah, they, they actually did an album, full album with John Stevens, and then an EP okay. right before I joined. So uh-huh. they did an album and a half. Okay. And then I've done three studio albums and a live album with the band since I've been in there uh, since 2015. Okay. Wow. Gosh, you guys are prolific. You're just cranking out music. It's amazing. Yep. So what's the vibe like when you go into the studio with these guys? It's pretty amazing, to be honest with you. Like, prior, prior to joining the Daisies, you know, pretty much every band that I've been in, like The Scream... We got a record deal, and they said, okay, guys, go write. And we put material together for the better part of a year. Right. And then the same with Motley. We got together, I joined the band, and we wrote for a year, maybe a little more, and then went and did a record. And the same with Union. Um, When Bruce and I first got Union together, we were just writing with the producer and putting ideas down and, you know, for the better part of the year. The thing with the daisies, it's, it's really spontaneous. I I can't explain it. And like a lot of people are kind of blown away by it, myself included at the fact that we will go into a studio, all three studio albums we've done. We went into the studio with nothing and we sit in a room together. Everybody's got an acoustic and, we'll write 15, 17, 20 songs, like, but loose. They're like little maps. Right. And then we're like, all right, yeah, this sounds cool. We got it. Go into the studio and we start tracking. While we're tracking, we're tweaking. And then I go in and I start writing lyrics, sometimes by myself, sometimes with the other guys. But I'll sit down and write lyrics, and then I start singing. And even while I'm singing, I'm still tweaking stuff, and we just go. And we have literally done pretty much every studio record we've done. We wrote it, recorded it, mixed it, mastered it, and did the artwork in about five weeks. Wow. I was going to ask you how long you spent on this, and I didn't think it would be that long. So, yeah, you were pretty much, uh, I was thinking about four or five, six weeks. Wow. It, yeah, well, it's the first record we did, in, it, it, it was exactly one month. We did uh, from March 10th to April 10th. Wow. And then after that, there was, you know, we started working with Marty. And you know what? It may have been sooner. It could have been sooner. But both records we did with Marty, we took, um, you know, a couple days, little breaks or whatever, because a lot of people don't realize it, but Marty not only is a producer and a songwriter, but he's also the guitar player in Steven Tyler's solo band. So we might work for a little bit, and then Marty's like, all right, I got to take like three days off. Steven's got, you know, two gigs this weekend, and so he would go off and, you know, he would, so we would take a little break and then come back or whatever. But it's it's pretty quick, man. It's like, you know, probably on average, if we actually put the time that we work in the studio, it's probably about a month, you know what I mean? So I'll say four to six weeks with breaks and everything like that. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty quick. Marty Fredrickson has been turning out hits for a very long time, and uh, I can't wait to uh, unleash this song and this album on the public. So Burn It Down is slated for release on April 6th, but the lead single, Rise Up, 
is out and it's already making noise. I'd love to play this cut for everyone. What can you tell us about Rise Up as the front runner single of this rockin' album? Rise Up is, um, it's actually a very, I, I don't know, we, we, it, we, we were working on it and we were just kind of blown away. We're like, oh, this is cool, man. It's like old school Sabbath. So it's a bit angry. It's a bit aggressive, you know, and lyrically, it's just, um, it's really kind of like, I, I don't want to say taking a piss out of, but it's kind of telling everybody like, you know, the stuff that we see that's so prevalent every day, you know, especially in America, the divisiveness between people, you know, e even in our politics, you have a conservative party, liberal party, and it, it, it's, it just never ceases to amaze me that these people will get online and they'll say something about um, President Trump. And then the other party comes in and they just immediately start attacking and insulting and talking about how horrible past presidents were and just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it's just like, seriously, at the end of the day, to me, all your politicians, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, to me, they're a bunch of career criminals Absolutely. that are lining their pockets with lobbyist money. They're, they're not there for the betterment of the, the, the working guy. No, they don't like, have your They're sitting in there negotiating whether or not we have health insurance, but they're all getting theirs for free. Of course. Um, you know what I mean? And I'm just sitting there saying, like, even the Declaration of Independence, the first three words are, we the people. Right. I, it's either the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, the Constitution, but it says we the people. And my thing is, you know what? If you want change, you want to correct things. What we need to do is as people, liberals and conservatives, we all need to bond together and we need to hold them all liberals and Democrats all accountable. We put them there. Now they're just sitting there and they're making their, I, I think I just read somewhere like a, the minimum salary for a congressman is like almost a million dollars a year. That's insane. I was going to say that, wait, that's more than the president makes <laughs> double what he makes. Well, yeah, because, but the, the president is making $450,000 a year, but you know, as he's got his travel things, you, sure. you know, everything's taken care of for the president, True. you know, but these congressmen, they have expense budgets, they have, spending budgets and they're getting money from you know they're getting money from lobbyists senators all these guys you know what i mean if, like whether it's pharmaceuticals or insurance and at the end of the day i think most people um regardless of your political affiliation i think if you sat down and put two people a conservative and a republican in a room together and said what concerns you they would say, well, I just want to be able to buy a house. Right. I want to be able to, you know, I want my kid to be able to go to college without breaking the bank and being, you know, 200000 in debt by the time he gets out of college. Um, I think I would like to have health insurance that's affordable for me and my family. I'd like to be able to buy pharmaceuticals that aren't going to break the bank. You Food know what I mean? Whatever. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I just want a happy life. I want a stress-free, happy life. And I think at the end of the day, if you talk to most people, we all want the same thing. Right. So I, my thing is rise up. It's like, you know what? Let's all bond together. Rise up. We the people, just like that document says. And we need to hold them accountable and say, you know what? This is what we want. And if you can't make it happen, we voted you in. We'll vote you out. We'll get somebody that can do the job. Again, I'm not taking a piss out of conservatives. I'm not taking a piss out of Repu uh, Democrats or liberals. I'm just saying they're all career criminals. They're, they're there making a lot of money on our behalf, and it isn't trickling down to us at all. No. We're very largely, by and large, centrists. And like you said, you know, we just want to get through, get through the day. And uh, you're right. They work for us. Well, I'm fired up. Let's go play this song for everybody. This is The Dead Daisies. This is Rise Up, the lead single from The Dead Daisies' brand new album, Burn It Down, on the number one show for new music, The Ray Powers Hour. You've got it locked into the number one show for new music all over the world, The Ray Powers Hour. That was Rise Up from The Dead Daisies' brand new album, Burn It Down, available on April 6th. 
My guest on the line, lead vocalist of the Dead Daisies, John Karabi. Well, man, that is a hard, nasty song. I heard the Sabbath influence with the tuned down guitars, and, uh, you know, I can use that to work out. That is a great song. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to admit, the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to work out and start getting shape for the tour, and it's definitely one that I put on, you know. But I, I, I think overall, the record, overall, the record is a. Um, it's a bit heavier than anything we've done, but not. It's not so heavy where it loses the melody. So um, we're pretty stoked about it. It's awesome. And you have your spots like "Set Me Free," where you kind of just you lay back a bit, you know, and let it groove, which yep. is really cool. Um, if I could put you in the spot, if I had to ask you, your favorite cut in this album? Oh man, I know. You it's know, I, it, it's it's hard because. You know, we're we're all involved in every one of the songs. You know what I mean? But I, you know what? Honestly, I, it, it kind of varies every day. Like some days, I'm like, oh, I love what go, what uh, comes around goes around, or goes around comes around. I love set me free. You know, it depends on the mood. But I think the one song for me personally that probably from a biographical or introspective point of view, I think it would probably be resurrected. You know, for me, when I was in Motley, I was on top of the world. And then when Vince came back, everybody and their grandmother wrote me off right. and said, he's done. And, and to a degree, even Dean, um, Dean went through a little bit of a turbulent time a few years back and yeah. he had a bullseye on his back for the last couple of years. And I know, you know, a lot of people write you off when you're when you're down. And to me, it's, you know, doing the Dead Daisies this late in life and still being around 30 years later, it's resurrected means a lot. You know what I mean? It's just it's just me saying, you know, I'm still here and I ain't going anywhere. You know what I mean? I'm 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 happy and I'm still I'm still writing music that people still want to hear. So here we go. Absolutely. You know, I had that circle. I thought you would say resurrected that and leave me alone are probably my two favorites. But, uh, so I'll play out with resurrected because you picked it. And because I just had a feeling. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now the current lineup, you guys all know each other. You're all similar in age and background, more or less. All grew up listening mm -hmm. to seventies hard rock. Um, it might sound like an obvious question, but does that make tracking, touring, and even hanging out just more natural and easier? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's 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 kind of funny. Like, you know, writing has been, you know, doing the records with this band has been, I don't want to say easy, because if I say easy, it's going to sound cocky. But it's But it has been. It's been relatively easy. We're all kind of on the same page, you know. I I love ACDC, but David Lowy really loves ACDC <laughs> well, yeah. from Australia. So that's his Led Zeppelin. Um, right. But I love Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, and, you know, so does David. So we, we all have, like, we all have that one band that we kind of gravitate towards, but we all kind of agree on the same things. Like, I, I love Grand Funk Railroad. Marco's like, oh, dude, that was, like, one of my favorite bands when I was growing up. The bass player was insane. Oh, Mel is an animal. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even even prior to us going on stage, we always have a speaker system and an iPod. And we literally just sit there and crank music. And there's never there's never a case of us going, oh, dude, who played this? You know what I mean? Like yeah. Doug will play Van Halen, Zeppelin. You know, he's a Randy Rhodes guy. Like, he'll play some of the more guitar-oriented stuff. But we all love it. You know what I mean? But he's also apt to go, dude, let's listen to some Skinner, you know? So it's, we all have, there's a giant pot of influences in front of us. And we all, you know, we all agree on the flavors. You know what I mean? So it's it's pretty cool. And they're all talented, some people may think I'm a great singer, but honestly, I'm just blessed to be able to turn around and see Doug Aldridge, Dean, David, and Marco behind me, backing me up. It's 
pretty awesome. Well, that's what really impresses me is that, you know, there are so many talented people in the world. You guys are obviously, you know, the 1%. But you check your egos at the door, and it seems like you're all having a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I mean, but we, look, we, we still have disagreements, you know. Um, oh, sure. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I may I may see something this way and David and Doug may see it a different, completely different way. And we'll have a disagreement. But the thing of it is, is we've been doing this long enough to know that um, we can disagree, but we don't need to talk to each other like idiots. We don't need to really fight about anything. It's just an opinion. Like if you're outvoted four to one or even three to two, then that's, that's it. It's Only. just, Right. You know, it is it is the way it is. So we've all kind of figured out how to, you know, we're all older guys. We've all had success. We've all had failures. And we now we've kind of figured out how to get the job done and not be idiots about it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now, the Dead Daisies have really crushed it overseas. I mean, the, the festivals are tremendous. And uh, the following is tremendous. They've always embraced rock music overseas. Uh, can we hope for any tour dates here in America? Yep. Um, awesome. We will actually be doing, you know, it, it, right now it's being put together, but I was told that we're probably going to do a six to eight week tour in the States in August and September. That's good news. That's very good news. Now, I don't know yet where we're going, but um, they're putting it together right now and they're actually trying to put, they're trying to find the right, um, like it, a killer opening act that we all agree on. And, um, but if anybody's interested, it'll, you know, if you go to deaddaisies.com, all the tour dates, as we put them together, they will all be listed on the website. That's awesome. And that website is deaddaisies.com. The deaddaisies.com. Yes. Sweet. Well, I can't wait to see this band live. Rock and roll is alive and well. Striper's putting out a brand new record. It's insanely heavy. Judas Priest is putting out, a heavy record. You guys have a heavy record. Yep. I mean, you know, rock is as strong as ever. I, I, um, you know, I know a few years ago, Gene Simmons basically said rock is dead. And <laughs> I, I kind of disagree with him. I don't, but I do. Um, I don't think yeah. the rock is dead. I don't think the fans have gone anywhere. I just think the method of letting the fans know that you're alive is a little bit different where sure. 20 years ago we had MTV and you had incredibly strong support from radio stations across America. And now it's a little, it's a little tougher. So now people are shifted like our management has figured out, okay, well, if radio and MTV can't come to the table, we're going to figure out how to use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, all those websites. And then we're going to use, YouTube is the new MTV. Absolutely. So that's what we're going to do. And they've done, I got to give them credit. You know, this whole thing from top to bottom, we have incredible management. We have incredible PR people. The band is awesome. We're writing great records. Our label support is amazing. And then at the end of the day, our fans are out of control. I just did some acoustic shows about a week and a half ago. And I literally had fans in New York city and Connecticut. One fan, Alex came from Rome, Italy. Oh my God. <laughs> flew over to see my acoustic show and then flew home the next day. And then there was a girl named Sashiko that came from uh, Tokyo and flew over to see me play in New York and Connecticut and then flew home. So our fans are just, they're just amazing. They're incredible. So the whole thing from top to bottom has just been an amazing experience. Wow. I can't top that. I did New York to Pittsburgh to come out with you and melt with you guys. It was 100 degrees at the Hard Rock at Bike Night uh, about six, seven years ago. I can't beat Rome or Japan. They win. <laughs> yeah, it That's was. Um, I was shocked when I walked in and saw them. I'm like, Alex, what are you doing here? He goes, I came to see you, buddy. <laughs> and look. Like, you know, and, and it's weird, like, you know, I know now, like, after all these years, like, I've got, I've got friends now in places like Norway and Italy and, you know, 
promoters and different fans that I've met that live in Venice. They're like, come stay in my, I have another house. You can use my boat and use my house. And, you know, so we have friends now all over the world that are just amazing. You know, can't top them. You know, and that's the lifeblood of this business is the fans and the energy that they bring. Yep. It's amazing. Well, John, I could talk to you all night. I know you got a ton of PR to do, so I'm going to let you roll. Thank you so much for this. Uh, Spitfire Music has put out this amazing record, The Dead Daisies. Get it on April 6th. The single is Rise Up and the album, Burn It Down. John, thank you so much. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. The Ray powers our